Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about how to set up a holding company for the first person step by step. Now, what is the first person? The first person is someone who has never created, established, or started a holding company or any company. This is a person who's going to be in their first business mind. Now I've talked about this before and I want to say this right now so you guys will get it plain and clear. I personally do not think you need to start a holding company unless you're in a situation where you're extremely well capitalized. Now what do I mean by that? Let's say you're person A. Person A is a person who has a normal job, who has an ideal for a business. You are not extremely capitalized. You're a person, maybe you make 35, maybe you make $50,000 a year, and you have some money set aside for your business. Now, once again, depends upon you financially, depends upon where you are financially. So you may not be in a position to set up a holding company. Now, let's say you're person B, you make $150,000 a year, you've got $50,000 just sitting in a savings account. Your situation is vastly different. You have enough money to create a holding company. You have enough money to create an operating company. You have enough money to fund the startup of virtually most businesses. So you're in a very different position. So it depends upon what position that you're in will you set up a holding company so i'm speaking to you as if you are a person you're a person you've got you make hundred fifty thousand dollars a year you have great credit you've got fifty thousand dollars just sitting in a savings account you are from an operational standpoint ready to set up a holding company and to set up your first operating company. So what will you do? And this is something that I can now give you guys benefits and clarity on. Do you have to include the word holding in your holding company? Absolutely not. And a lot of people do because they want to separate the holding company from the rest of their business. But you can or you cannot, it's perfectly fine. Johnson & Johnson is a holding company. Berkshire Hathaway is a holding company. It just really depends on what you wanna name your company. So what I would suggest that you do is to take a moment or a few moments and to sit down and write out your standard operating procedure before you do anything. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna name our company. Now this is where it gets to be a little interesting. Let's say you live in Colorado and you want to set up your holding company in Wyoming. And then you set up your operating company in Colorado. Easy to do, this is, this is something that you can set up. Now let's talk about why would you set up your holding company in Wyoming. Wyoming has some of the best laws for LLCs and also when you set up your holding company in the state of Wyoming, when someone goes to Wyoming and looks up your company, they will never see your name because the state of Wyoming doesn't require the business owner's name to be listed on the website. So you'll have this company that no one knows who owns it. That's extremely important to some people. I didn't do that. I set up my holding company here in the state of Georgia and the way that I run my business, I am not worried about that, but maybe you are. Maybe you want to be completely anonymous. Maybe you want to be, now I will tell you, there's some things that are coming up and stay tuned. I want you to subscribe. I want you to hit the bell notification, hit all those, hit all. And I want you to watch this video two or three times because going forward, we're gonna get into some of the more esoteric things you can do. So let's say you're person B, you're sitting down and you're just like, we're gonna open up our holding company in the state of Wyoming. Now this is a lot of stuff that you can do online and through the mail. Now, this is where it could get a little tricky 
because your holding company is in the state of Wyoming, but you live in Colorado. And when you wanna to go to the bank to set up your holding company's checking, I would suggest that if you don't have one, you should get yourself a passport because banks can be very peculiar, particular about where you are, who you are, and how you're setting up your business banking. In some cases, you can do it in Colorado if you know how to talk. In some cases, you may have to fly to Wyoming, rent a room, stay a day or so, and set up your business checking. It really depends, and this is why this is aimed at person B. Person B, who is well capitalized, has the money to do those things. Whereas if you're person A, let's just say you, you could get a ticket for 300 bucks, your hotel is gonna be 80, so this is gonna be a $500 trip. That could be a stretch for you if you're person A and operating from person's A financial standpoint. But if you're person B with money, good credit, just take some time off, go do that. This is why we're talking to you as person B. If you don't have adequate capital or credit, I would once again would not recommend that you set up a holding company. But once again, watch the video, make your own decision. So person B, we're setting up our holding company in Wyoming. We're setting up our operating company in Colorado. We're going to go to Wyoming. We're gonna set up our business banking and we're going to, because you have good credit, you're gonna set up, you, you get your EIN, you're gonna, first of all, you're gonna set up your corporation, you're gonna get your EIN, and you're gonna get a registered agent. Let's talk about that. You're going to need to get a Wyoming-based registered agent because you cannot be the registered agent. You could, but once again, this is something that they're set up for and they're relatively cheap. So you wanna go ahead and get yourself a Wyoming-based registered agent. Once again, depends upon how you flow and your cash flow. You wanna get a Wyoming address. Now, I'm gonna tell you something that you don't know. You can go to a UPS address in Wyoming, UPS box, and have them set it up where any mail that comes to that box they will automatically send it to you. There will be a fee for this, but you can set it up where your Wyoming based address just sends mail. Now, once again, this is a UPS box and with technology, all of your creditors or credit people you apply for credit are going to know that that's a UPS box. So that's one way. There's another way you can find a business, a local business, that will rent you a mailbox in the state of Wyoming. Now, this is where it gets a little interesting. You go ahead, once again, you could do this from Colorado and literally do it all by mail and never actually go to the state of Wyoming. Never do it. But once again, as we move forward, I'm trying to help you make your holding company bulletproof make your holding company substantial once again i personally don't care if my name is on anything but you may have a big issue with that so go ahead go to wyoming find a place that will and once again this is something else you don't know there's a lot of public offices that will rent you a mailbox and this is not something that advertised and what you would have to do is set up a situation where the person who manages the mailboxes will actually be able to send you whatever mail you get there and this is you would have to talk to them you would have to negotiate an agreement and then they will be paid for sending you your mail be sure you don't have to do any of this stuff you can do it all online you can do it from the comfort of your home but once again going forward knowing what i know about business checking business banking and business credit it can get a little difficult at times depending on who you bank with if you're in colorado and you go to chase bank you're probably not going to have any problems because chase bank i think is virtually in every state so that's not going to be an issue but once again it could be it could be. So you sit down, we're gonna set up our holding company in Wyoming. We're gonna set up our 
standard operating company in Colorado. You got the holding company open, you've got your EIN, you've got your business checking, you got your ATM card, and you open up your holding company banking at a place, at a bank that has business credit. You have good credit, you applied for the business credit card, you got the business credit card. So you are really good to go from a holding company standard standpoint. The next thing that you're going to do is open up your operating company. And this is very important. When you open up your operating company, you're going to make sure that your Wyoming based holding company is the one that is opening up the operating company in Colorado. And depending upon where you get it, it's going to be who's forming this and who's forming it will be the holding company. Now, what this does is create a system where they can, they know the company's name, but they don't know who owns it because the owner of the Colorado based operating company is a Wyoming based holding company. So they can go to the secretary of Colorado, secretary of state of Colorado, look in there and they see, oh, this Wyoming based holding company owns it. And then they go to the Wyoming and they still can't find out who owns this company. There's a, who owns this company? I really want to know, but they can't find out because the situation has been set up where they cannot find out who owns the operating company, who owns the holding company. And that's the way that you would set up your holding company strategy if you want to be anonymous. Now, also, for those of you who care, and once again, from a state standpoint, this is how you can do it from a state standpoint. You can open up what's called a trust. Trust, they don't, you can't Google the trust name. The trust can open up the LLC. So the trust opens up the LLC. So the trust is the owner of the holding company. Now, once again, it's my duty to fully inform you, you may want to hire someone to do this because there's going to be tax implications because once you set up the trust, then you set up the holding company, then you set up the operating company, there's going to be the operating company reporting to the holding company and the holding company reporting to the trust. So this can be, once again, this is for person B, the person who's well capitalized, who has good credit, who has cash on hand, because there are going to be numerous expenses and stuff with this. And when I say numerous expenses, I'm not talking like five or $10,000. I'm not talking about that kind of money. But once again, if you're person A and a thousand dollar expense, which is pretty much what it could be to set up the trust, then it's up the holding company. That could be a little much for you. So if you want to do it in your state, set up a trust, have the trust set up the holding company. Once again, this provides optimum protection and it hides your name from being on any website talking about how to and no one can know once again no one will know so you can have the trust own the holding company the trust is you or the trust and then you can have the holding company set up the operating company so th those are some simple easy to do things and let's go ahead and talk about money and but while we're on money be sure to subscribe be sure to hit the bell notification thing and be sure to watch this video three to four times. When I talk about money, I'm not talking about you have to be a millionaire. I'm not talking about that kind of money. When I talk about money, I'm talking about disposable, accessible capital. And this is why I use point A, the regular person working a job who doesn't have a lot of disposable capital. This person may have, let's just go ahead and throw a number out there. Let's say this person has $5,000 in a savings account to start his business. And then we go over here, this is person A. Then we go to person B, person B has $50,000. And person B has a higher personal income. So person B is in a situation where they can go ahead 
and start their business and not be struggling to look for or to raise or pondering how to get cash because they already have cash. Once again, person A is a normal person, $5,000. Person B is a highly paid professional, $150,000, $50,000 in the bank, good credit, and person A has good credit. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Person A has good credit, and person A could do this utilizing their good credit, but once again, this brings in more risk, this brings in more eyes, this brings in a lot more drama. So you got person A and you have person B. If you're person A, once again, my recommendation is you go ahead, get the business started, up and running, making money. Now, here's the way that person A can then put this seasoned, established LLC into a holding company. All right, so let's say you're person A and it's year three. Your business is up. Let's say you're doing 150,000 gross revenue, not net profit, and you want to get into the holding company game. So this is what you do. First of all, you wait until the end of the year. And what you do is you set up this holding company sometime in December or January. I would recommend that you set up the holding company in December, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna file your taxes for January to December for that operating company. And then you're going to establish your holding company, December, and January 1st, you're going to sell that established money-making corporation to the holding company. The holding company is already set up. You went ahead to the bank, you got your holding company, you got your EIN, you went to the bank, maybe even get your business credit card, you got all that, and you're ready. You're just waiting on to January 1st to sell that established operating company. And when I say sell, there's not gonna be an exchange of money. What you're going to do is go into your Secretary of State's ecosystem, and there's gonna be a cost that's gonna be called an administrative change. And what you're gonna do is take your name off of the established LLC that's making money, and then you're gonna put the name of the holding company as the now defunct owner of that operating company. And that's how you sell or put an established money-making operating company into a brand new holding company. Now, what's gonna happen? Why do you do it January 1st? Because this company's making money, you do it January 1st, so January 1st to December 31st, you would have a record for you to pay your taxes through your holding company. Now, this is because the holding company now owns this LLC, the taxes are gonna be filed at the holding company level. Now, you can do the holding company as an S Corp, or you can do the holding company as a regular LLC. My recommendation is that you do this as an S Corp because the primary operating company makes money and you could pay yourself a really small salary and take the rest of the money as a distribution. So I would set up my holding company in December as an S corporation, which means you have to file two forms with the Internal Revenue Service to now turn this regular LLC that's a holding company into an S corp so you can get those magnificent tax benefits. Magnificent. You could, look, let's say your company does 150 gross revenue and your profits are pretty high. After your expenses, let's say your profits 120. You could pay yourself 30,000, which you would be paying full payroll taxes. And then you could just take the other money as the distribution where you only have to pay federal tax or if you're in a state with state tax, federal and state tax. So there, there's a way that you can make this a very magnificent move. And I've seen it in the comments that people are like, hey, how do I turn this into, once again, how do I turn this situation into a holding company? Once again, if you're bringing, if you're in point A, I would recommend that you don't do this until you're making money. If you're point B, 
$150,000 a year, $50,000 saved, good credit, go ahead, knock yourself out. So this is what I have for you today. Hopefully you enjoy it. Once again, subscribe, hit the bell notification for all, and watch this video three or four times and send it to anyone that you want to be successful in the holding company game. That's all I got for you today. Thank you for joining me. I will see you guys next time.